Okay, good evening. Uh, uh, welcome everyone to the series of uh, open lectures of uh, IT College. Now it is uh, Staltec IT College. And uh, I'm pleased to introduce the, the distinguished uh, guest, uh, Björn, uh, Björn Kimini. Exactly, perfect. Okay, perfect. Uh, who is the web security expert, uh, uh, IT architecture manager at the uh, international company Kuna and Nagel. Uh, in addition, uh, he is lecturing uh, in one of uh, universities, uh, uh, North Academy. Uh, is it in Poland? It's in uh, it's it's near Hamburg. Near Hamburg. Yeah. It means it's in Germany. It's there Germany. is mistake, and actually in the Estonian introduction, you probably noticed that there was uh, mentioned Poland, but uh, it is. Oh, was it? <laughs> I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't realize. <laughs> you have never uh, never lectured in Poland. No, I haven't. Well, Not you yet. have uh, maybe, maybe the next opportunity. And uh, in addition, uh, uh, um, Bjorn is responsible for open uh, security project OVASP, and uh, I, un I understood that, that he will make us a little tour um, using this uh, shop tour in Jewish shop tour, where we can see how to take down uh, the web uh, pages or, or internet shops and uh, Hopefully, it will be exciting experience. And now, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, yeah, welcome. Um, actually, what I what I plan to do, I was just trying to uh, get as much attention as possible for my new startup to sell as much juice as possible, so you can have all the juice you want, and I can get all your money. So that was my original plan. So this is now a two-hour sales pitch basically for the for the juice shop so who of you have uh, ever heard of this application before please show your hands okay a couple but not too many that's good then i will not bore most of you i hope so what is the OWASP juice shop um as you can as you can see can you see Yes. I'm duplicating. Okay, that's better. Okay, as you can now see, um, the Jew shop is the most trustworthy online shop out there. This is actually a real quote from, from Twitter. I could show you the original if you want. It's the best juice shop on the whole internet. And uh, this is my favorite, actually, it's actually the most bug-free vulnerable application in existence. Of course, this is all more a joke than actually real. In reality, the juice shop is, an, is a completely broken web application. Okay, it's so riddled with problems and security issues, you wouldn't believe it. And I would like to show you how, how broken it is today with some slides and also a little bit of demonstrations. So first of all, Let's see. What is OWASP? So OWASP, you mentioned it already, is the Open Web Application Security Project, which is a nonprofit organization which is acting globally, and its main mission is to make sure that we all write and operate better and more secure software. That's their main focus. So Juice Shop, that's a pretty weird name for a for an open source project, I guess. So where does this name come from? So it's basically a, a word play from, from German. So the, the English word dump or useless outfit, so basically a shop that is really gives you a horrible shopping experience, right? So everyone is unfriendly, the products are really bad. Um, this is called Saftladen in German. And if you split this up into Saft and Laden and translate that both, then you get juice shop. So that's why, where the project name is coming from. By actual coincidence, the juice shop is written in JavaScript completely, but that was not part of the decision for this name. That was actually really just a pure coincidence. So let's take a look like the average Joe shopper would into the juice shop, how it looks like. So here we go, I can zoom in a bit. This is this, the starting page. You have the obvious 
cookie banner you have to accept, right? So, of course, we want cookies because why not? And, well, you can see a list of products here. You can open them up, get an idea, okay, what it is. Ah, there seems to be some review from someone. Okay, that's nice. What else you can... Let's just, let, let's just click on everything that's available. So there's an About Us page, which explains the very exciting uh, history of the, of the company and also shows some fancy slider for customer feedback. Okay, that's cute. Some unavoidable social media links. Mm -hmm. There's a contact form. Okay, let's try this out. Hello, Tallinn. Five stars, obviously. So now, what's seven times nine plus ten? Uh, I hope I'm right. Looks good. So let's see. Maybe we can see our feedback here already. And here it is. Yay. Okay, that worked. So what else? We can search, for example, if we are only interested in Apple stuff. Well, we can search for Apple. Or lemon. Or maybe we are more into raspberry juice, like this one, which is pretty tasty. Good. What else? We can obviously switch the language. And as you can see, there's a lot of languages available. Even Estonian is r there. So we could actually use it like this. Luckily, I know where all the buttons are. Otherwise, I would be a little bit uh, under pressure now. So, OK, but we cannot really shop, it would seem. So maybe we need to make sure that we have an account first. So let's see. I would like to become a customer. So Björn at mm -hmm. so password and it's checking uh, for at least for password length. Let's take a secure one. And of course, a security question because everybody likes security questions. Which is the best one I can pick here? Well, name of your favorite pet, maybe. Okay, so. I'm an honest person, so I put the actual name of, of uh, our family cat in, which is Zaya, which is a really long word and perfect for security purposes. So let's register. And let's try to log in. And it seems that worked. So now I have a few more options here. For example, I can put stuff into my shopping basket. And I really, really want to have that raspberry juice that we saw earlier. So let's put some of those into the shopping basket. Let's also get, well, a coffee mug is always useful. And maybe when it's getting colder, a hoodie. And, well, some apple juice, just for fun. Okay, so let's see. That's now all in my shopping basket. And ah, you, as you can see here already, um, that's because the juice shop is an, is an open source project and open source projects typically ask for donations. So let's close this real quick. We don't want to donate today. So I can play around with the quantities a bit. I can throw out some stuff because, well, I don't really want a mug. Um, and then there's this little button. And this is one very central takeaway for today, uh, I would say. So whenever you see a a gift button somewhere on the internet or you get an email with a gift link or whatever just click on it because nothing bad ever happened from receiving a gift right so let's see what's behind here a coupon code okay nice so i could save some money let's try hmm. okay 10 characters okay that doesn't work but it says i can get one on twitter for example so let's see if the Twitter account of the juice shop has some coupon code for us. Maybe we're lucky. Let's see. Oh, here we go. There's a coupon code for 35% off until end of this month. So let's try if that works. Which it does. Okay, great. So now let's check out because I have everything I want and I will hopefully get a 
discount. So there you go. Perfectly formatted, beautiful invoice with rounding errors slightly, but well, never mind. But I get my discount at least. Okay, that works. Uh, what else do we have? We could change our password. We could do some order tracking. Well, that seems to be not a real tracking number. I could complain if I wanted to, if there's something wrong, and then I could upload my order confirmation, for example. There's some recycling options. So probably when I, when I have this uh, juice press here, I can then send back the remains for recycling purposes, and I can log out. Well, that's, that's mostly it. So as you can see, this is basically a fully functioning e-commerce system, small web shop, right? So you can do everything you would expect. The only thing that won't happen is um, when you buy something here, I won't send you any actual juice. And But luckily for you, I also don't take your money. So that's, that's a win-win situation as well, I would say. So let's take a look what this actually is, because this is, of course, all just facade, so to say. So first of all, um, this juice shop application is meant to be run uh, on your own. So basically, you can install it, and you can uh, then, of course, use it as a hacking hacking tool or hacking exercise tool. So it's pretty easy to install. You can put it on Node.js directly locally on your machine. There's a Docker uh, image, which is pretty popular. Um, you can, we have a Vagrant um, box you can set up, or you can put it onto any cloud service, um, and some of them pretty easily. So the Heroku installation down here, that's basically uh, just a one-click thing you need to do on the GitHub page, and then you get automatically a container configured for, for hacking. So that's nice. The main thing that's interesting in this application is actually the so-called hacking challenges, right? So all this stuff you saw, I just used it in a very careful way and made sure that I don't accidentally uh, make anything malicious, do anything malicious. But this application is full of problems, okay? So it's, at the moment, I think 63. With the next major release, it will be 72 security issues in this uh, small application, okay? And you can try to, or the idea is that you try to find them all. So as you can see from the list, um, the juice shop is basically covering everything you find on the OWASP top 10. So from cross-site scripting, SQL injection, authentication issues, and that kind of stuff. But there's also some more fancy and more complicated things like completely broken business logic or uh, other things. So those 60 plus challenges come in different difficulties. Okay, so there are some which are pretty easy. There are some medium ones and some are really, really hard. So in, the, in total, there are six levels. So it's from one to six stars, the difficulty. So uh, let's do that. So um, for the easy challenges, you typically get away quite, quite easily with uh, just try and error, right? So you play around with some, uh, some, some uh, input fields, you might actually trigger some challenge automatically and find some vulnerability um, without much effort. Then there's some which are a bit more complex. So you need to do some information gathering, you need to find some, uh, some hints about, uh, oh, there might be a problem in this page, for example, and then um, you can exploit the challenge. And the most difficult ones, are basically, um, I call them multi-step um, challenges. So you have to solve different challenges first, and then you can tackle the harder ones um, based on the information you found in the earlier challenges, for example. So it's a little bit like following breadcrumbs. So at, at the heart of this whole challenge idea um, is the so-called scoreboard. Um, so, so, I mean, if you have over 60 challenges in an application, it's hard to actually keep track of what you actually just did or not solve yet, right? So it would be nice if the application showed you what you can do with it and um, how to actually um, di different, different, uh, the different sections with different difficulties so you can choose which uh, ones you want to try first. So the thing is, I clicked on everything 
that is in this application, but we didn't see this, right? So, well, we could now try to find out where the scoreboard is, okay? That would be a nice first little, little exercise, so to say. So, if I just click around the application, I will not find it. So, one obvious place where we might take a look could be the, the source code of the application, maybe. So, let's take a look at this. It seems it's loading a lot of JavaScript stuff. And, well, maybe I just try searching for score. Okay, the underscore library is probably not the scoreboard. But here we have a winner. So, there's this little scoreboard menu visible thing. And it tells us, oh, there's a, a route called score dashboard, which we could try. So, let's try that out. And as you can see, two things happen. First, we see the scoreboard. Second, you get a little green notification box telling you that you just found the scoreboard. And if we scroll down here in the easy challenges, the one stars, you can see that the scoreboard challenge is actually s tagged as solved, right? So that's basically what the application offers. So you can, you now know, okay, there's over 60 challenges in it. So we could just pick one and try to actually try to actually solve it. So there's some cross-site scripting stuff. We could try to give the store a zero star feedback, for example, or we can just try to provoke some error. So let's let's do some cross-site scripting. Okay. So that cross-site scripting is always fun. So if I take this a text string here, and well, where would be an obvious place where I could try to put it? Well, obviously in the search field, right? So let's see if that works. As you can see, it does. So I get an XSS pop-up, click OK. I get the notification that I solved it. So now I can go back to the scoreboard and see I have two challenges solved, right? So this is basically the, the, the general idea. So, So it gives you immediate feedback when you solve some 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 of the exercises. Another nice thing is um, if your application crashes because it, maybe it's it's uh, you, you're doing some attack that is so aggressive that the server doesn't doesn't make it, uh, or you just wanna um, you just don't have the time to solve all the sixty challenges in one day, so you just want to take a break. So you can turn off the um, the application, shut down your computer, and come back next day just start it up again, and in your um, browser, there's basically a cookie that stores all the solved challenges, and it will just um, fire up and, and show you, and basically repopulate the scoreboard for you with all the stuff you already solved, which is quite nice. Um, because then you don't have to do everything over and over again. So, what else? The juice shop has some nice feature. Um, which is uh, called uh, it's CT CTF support. So you can use it in a capture the flag event. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a hacking competition, if you will, right? So there's typically a defined time frame where some application is being made available to the participants. They try to hack as many or try to solve as many hacking challenges as possible, and then um, whoever gets the most points wins. That's basically the idea. And the juice shop can be put into so-called um, CTF mode. And let me just show you how that works. So this is the juice shop as it is right now. Now let me just shut it down and start it up again with a CTF flag. And then, now that the server is up in a second, I hope. Now you can see this notifications here, right? 
Um, the thing is, the database is completely wiped when the application is started. So that's why it needs to restore all the challenges from the client. So, okay, we have already these things solved here. Now I can refresh the page and it will basically look almost the same except for the little icon uh, on the top for the logo. It now has a flag piercing through the juice um, box. So let's solve one more challenge then. Um, maybe just provoking some error. So let's see if we can provoke some error. I can try to type some garbage here. Maybe. Ugh, that looks broken. So let's get back. Hmm. Okay. Well, maybe I can try to log in with some garbage credentials, maybe. Well, that doesn't work. Oh, my goodness. So I completely accidentally just put in a single quote in the login um, username for our email for, uh, field. And this happens, okay, and this is obviously an error that is not very carefully handled. And the difference between this mode and the previous one is I now see this little code here, which I can copy and I can use to actually participate in a CTF event. But at the moment, I only have my juice shop, so there's no CTF event going on. So we, if we wanted to use this code, we would actually need to set up a CTF. This is normally a very um, time, uh, intensive uh, process to do, but the juice shop has some nice tools which make that pretty easy. So let's just take the, do the following. The juice shop has its own little sister project, which is called uh, juice shop CTF. And it essentially is a little command line tool which you can run to generate data that you can then later import into um, popular CTF platforms. So you basically just have a one click or several click import and then you just get um, a full, fully set up CTF server for free. So I already installed that, but let's see. So you, all you have to do is you need to install this little tool And while it's installing, let me just show you how the, how the final setup will look like. So the idea is that every participant in a CTF has uh, his or her own juice shop instance running. And it doesn't matter where it is. So it can be on your machine, on, uh, and it can be running in a Docker container, it can run in some cloud service, it does not matter. It's, it just has to be your own. And um, the, the, in the middle, you have this uh, score server. Um, I typically like to use uh, CTFD, which is also open source and pretty powerful and easy to set up. The thing that this central server and all the instances participating need to share is a, is a, is a shared secret, basically. Right? So this secret is used to create these, these codes. Okay, so the, the solution codes basically must be the same for all participants of a CTF. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. So let's see if we can actually make this work. So my package here installed. So let's run juice shop CTF. And this little tool will now ask me a couple of questions. So first of all, I want CTFD as a platform. So then it needs the URL where it can basically get the challenges. So I can, I could use the one that is given here, or I can use just the one localhost 3000. Then it needs this secret key, and I just use the default one. And then there's the option to um, let it offer the participants some hints and some help. So there's text hints, which can be either free, paid, or not available. So let's make those free. And there's also hint URLs available. So let's make those paid. And now it just generates a little um, zip file. 
over here. Right? So, and let's just try and import that now into CTFD. So for that purpose, I have a running CTFD server. It's just freshly started, so there's, I didn't do anything with it yet. And you could start your stopwatch now because it will not take five minutes, it will take a lot less. So this is the first thing you see. So let's call this juice shop CTF Tallinn. And awesome password, submit. So now I have a blank CTF server for the scores. There's nothing in it, no challenges, no scoreboard, nothing. If I go to the, to the administration section, there's a config section and this has a backup feature and I can go to import I can choose a generated file and just untick everything that is not challenges, click import, and let's see what happens. It works a little bit. Okay, it doesn't show me an error, that's a good sign. And if I go to the challenges now, you can see there's 63 challenges imported, which is exactly the same that we have currently running on the system. And if you try to set up this manually, then it will take you a while. So, um, so let's get back to the main page. A participant in this CTF, um, they would actually see this in the challenge section, right? And now they could basically pick one of the challenges that they solved on the, in the, in the do shop like in our example here, we solved the error handling challenge. So let's look that up. Error handling, here it is. And well, we already solved it, so we don't really need some, some hint. So we can just copy that to the clipboard, paste it in, submit it, and we get 100 points, right? So that's, that's all the magic behind it. Another nice feature, if you happen to close this too quickly, then your flag code is gone, then you cannot solve the challenge ever again. Well, that's not the case. If you are in CTF mode, you can just click on this solved button and then you get the message again. So we can also solve, for example, our um, scoreboard challenge. Right, so that's basically the idea. You don't have to use it in this way. So this is mostly for, um, for example, if you, if you do a training with like 20 participants and you want to make it a little bit more exciting and, and uh, challenging, then you can set something up like this. I would not, I, I totally cannot recommend to do any commercial CTFs with the juice shop because there's so many solutions and uh, cheats and everything out in the internet already that it's almost impossible um, to, to set it up in a way that not someone is just copy and pasting solutions from, from somewhere else. So this is a just for fun CTF application, right? So this is what you, what you can do. So I showed all that. Um, you can also, if you want to set up a CTF programmatically, you can do so um, via a configuration file instead of answering these questions from the, from the command line interface. So that's also working. Um, yeah, and then you get this. Okay, so is that everything? No, there's even more stuff. Um, I personally, I like to use the juice shop also for uh, awareness trainings. So where I basically just show some stuff and explain some vulnerabilities to people without this whole solving uh, challenges on your own aspect. And then if, if I accidentally trigger a challenge, like this error handling that happens from time to time, and then this green pop-up shows up, then um, someone maybe from, from IT management is a little bit, might be a little bit confused and wonder what is, what is that? That looks cheesy. Um, so there's a quiet mode, so you can basically run it in a way that it doesn't show any notifications at all. Building on top of this quiet mode, um, there's also the possibility to rebrand it completely. 
that is actually a feature that uh, a colleague of mine implemented because he was doing um, awareness trainings in big insurance companies. And I don't know, depending on what companies you work in, sometimes especially managers have a problem relating to something they have absolutely no connection with. Developers don't really care. If they see this black um, juice shop thing, it, it doesn't really matter to you, I guess, or to most IT guys, it doesn't really matter. But for a manager, it, it's easier to connect if it looks like an application of their own company. And that's where this um, customization feature is coming from. So if I take this, if I kill the server here, and I start it with some custom parameter, for example, there's a theme for Mozilla. So I just started. I refresh the page. And it now looks like a Mozilla shop, right? So different title. If we go to the inventory here, different stuff. Yeah, Mo Mozilla had base cap, all kinds of stuff, all completely changed. Look and feel is different. Even the Twitter link is different, right? So it's, it's completely customizable. Maybe showing another example. This is basically um, a theme that I made for one of my favorite security podcasters. Seven minute security. So if I start that, then the shop will look like this and it will again sell completely different stuff right so this is a it's completely customizable to your to your needs so and this is something even managers can relate to if it looks like something from your own company so how is this actually possible everything you can configure is specified in a in a simple yaml file so you can specify uh, the domain ending for the for the pre um, for the for the pre-populated user database. You can choose a name. You can choose a logo, and so on and so on. And the thing is that the the juice shop in its default um, setup is already using this theme file, basically, right? So it's eating its own dog food, if you will. So and the thing is, you can now overwrite everything you like, down to this where you overwrite all the different products. So you can define your complete own product database. And if you, for example, want to have different images in, um, in the shop for the products, you just have to specify, show, you just have to specify a URL as the corresponding image. And what the juice shop will do when it starts, it will just download that file to the correct folder and link it to the product and then just display it. So you can, what, what I, for example, did for my for, for, for Kühn and Nagel, I basically uh, went to our own um, online shop um, for merchandise and just copied and pasted every um, image URL and all the descriptions in and created also such a, such a configuration file. So that's basically the same I also did for this seven minute security setup. You can even predefine custom uh, reviews from customers, for example. So it's actually quite, quite powerful. So underlying all this is a modern web architecture. So in air quotes, because of this over here, I mean, Angular 1.6 is not necessarily more modern anymore, but uh, it's about to change pretty soon. So, um, well, it's a, so it's a, it's a JavaScript based front end. In the back end, we have a Node.js application with Express as the main framework. Um, SQL, SQLite as the database because it's so nicely lightweight so and you can just throw it away um, on every server restart and it doesn't cost any any um, I don't I don't need a special container or VM or anything running the database right it can just run in memory inside the or on in the, in the, in the file system so uh, yeah SQLite is used to bind this to some uh, to do the object relational mapping. Um, 
There's also this fellow here, which is a little MongoDB, but implemented in JavaScript, which sounds horrible, maybe, but it and it actually is. So it's a it's a JavaScript implementation of MongoDB, which is called MarsDB. I would not necessarily recommend it for production use. May, well, do some of the NoSQL injection challenges, and you know why. So, you saw it in the language dropdown already. Um, OWASP in general is very, it, it's, it's very global, and that's why they say, okay, a, a good project needs to have uh, translations for different languages, so there's a lot of different uh, languages, and complete, in this case, means that it's at least, I think, 80 or 85 percent translated. So. Last year, when I was at the Chaos Treff um, hackerspace here, um, there were like two guys who actually spent the whole evening just translating everything into Estonian, which was very nice. So, so there are all kinds of languages, but there are still some missing. And if, if you happen to know some language which, which is not on the list yet, then just uh, get in touch and I will add it, and then you can freely translate uh, to your heart's content. Some more technical stuff in the background. So um, I'm a big fan of test automation. Uh, why am I a big fan of test automation? Because I really don't like to be this guy, right? Because this hurts. Testing manually should be the last thing you have to do. And uh, down. Okay. So if if you can find the problems early on with, for example, a large layer of unit tests, that's the best situation you get. On top of this, I have a layer of API tests, which are also automated. And on top of that, I have a full end-to-end -end test suite. Now, it's a little bit different than with a normal application. In a normal application, you do end-to-end -end tests, or you write end-to-end -end tests, to basically test your main use cases, right? In the Juice Shop, I basically wrote end-to-end -end tests, which automatically exploit all the challenges. So basically, the tests are hacking the application, and um, maybe at the end I can try to run it. Um, so it will basically fill up the scoreboard from 0 to 100% in like three minutes or so. That's also a reason why you should not use this in a commercial CTF, because then just someone can run it like this, and then just go through the 60 notifications in the browser and copy and paste all the solutions. On the DevOps side, there's also a little pyramid. Um, so at the bottom of all is NPM for building stuff. I use some grunt scripts, but not very much. Um, the code is written in uh, with, with a standard JS or JavaScript standard um, in mind for, for clarity. And on top of that, there's a nice cloud build infrastructure, right? So there's a Travis CI build for, um, for the Linux stuff. There's an uh, this one is AppVayor, which is basically the same like Travis, just for Windows machines. And I, I essentially use those two to generate um, the files where um, the zip files with the prepackaged Juice Shop versions, right? So you can then just download and unpack and just use out of the box. There's a Docker image being built automatically. There's demo instances on Heroku available, and on top of all that. I'm using GreenKeeper to keep my dependencies up to date, at least the ones I want to have up to date, because there are some which I want to have in a really old version, which is vulnerable to some stuff. There's Code Climate for um, for code quality checks, and uh, Snook, no no idea how how you pronounce it. Um, that's uh, also for security checks, because actually I only want those security holes in the juice shop, which I put there, right? Or which, which, are, which are meant to be hacking challenges. But we already had the situation that some new vulnerability was found and the juice shop was affected by it. So then if that occurs, then I can basically choose. Either I fix it or I try to build a challenge around it. And the last is, of course, more, more fun. Okay. So there are some questions that always occur um, 
about the juice shop and let's just quickly go through some of them. So first question I almost always get is, can I use my Zap proxy? Can I use my burp suite? Can I use my expensive tool XYZ from, I don't know, some big company who, tell, who sells expensive stuff? Um, yes, you can. Okay, you can use all the tools you like. You can also just use your browser and maybe some, some REST API testing client. That's totally sufficient for most of the challenges. But of course, some hacking tools can help. But don't make the mistake that you um, assume that you just run some expensive tool, let it scan the juice shop automatically, and that it will solve any challenges for you or find any real vulnerabilities in it, right? So most of the fully automated tools today are really bad at analyzing JavaScript heavy applications. Yeah? They are good with JSPs and active server pages and that kind of old school technology, but with JavaScript in the front end, they are not so, not so good yet. So what next? Can I do a white box pen test? No, unfortunately you can't. Because if you look at the source code, I mean, all those green notifications and uh, the tracking of the challenges, it must be coded somewhere, right? And so if you look at the source code, you would immediately see um, how most of the challenges work. With the difference, you don't, you don't necessarily understand how they actually work, right? But you're spoiling it for yourself. So don't look at the GitHub repository or the source code on your local machine after cloning. On the other hand, you can totally use the internet. Well, maybe except for the GitHub page, obviously, but also not with the, uh, there's some, some uh, walkthroughs being written by different people. So you can do normal internet research on vulnerabilities, on libraries you maybe found out I'm using here in the shop, stuff like this. That's totally allowed and necessary for many of the challenges, actually. What if it doesn't work? The installation breaks. Well, it should be quite properly documented in the readme. If it still doesn't work, then you can ask, for example, in our Gitter chat, which you might see here, right? Here it is. And we try to help you as quickly as possible. Or you can always, of course, open a GitHub issue. If the server crashes, don't worry, just restart get back and all the challenges you had are uh, solved again. That's why if you're using this um, to get everything solved, don't use it in incognito mode, okay? Because then you don't get your um, cookie for, for the solved challenges. Actually, there's even one challenge that's one of the hardest ones, which is right down here. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is it? Number five. Ah, come on. Ah, here we go. The imaginary challenge. So there's a challenge that actually doesn't exist, but it's a challenge to solve it anyway. Okay? So it's sometimes it's a little bit weird, but uh, on the other hand, it's quite fun. But this is a six-star challenge for a reason. So don't start with that if you try out the juice shop, please. You will hate it afterwards. So if you're completely stuck, uh, I actually put some time into writing a, a little book um, which contains tons of information, including hints for each and every challenge and complete step-by-step -step solutions for every challenge as well. So, and this is free for download on LeanPub or on, can read it on Gitbook. It actually is even, and let me just, uh, let me just restart it without the seven minute security look and feel. It is even possible to click on any challenge unsolved button down here and it will bring you directly to the corresponding hint page in the in the ebook right as you can see here there's for all kinds of challenge types or categories there's solution uh, there's hints 
And in the appendix, you basically find solutions for everything, right? So it's complete step by step. I don't recommend to just go through this first because then you're missing all the fun. So here essentially, now you, there's an overview where you can basically just jump to the corresponding sections as well. So, and the challenges range from trivial to, I think the last one is called diabolic, yeah. And that's, that's for a good reason, actually. So, if you found some other vulnerability, or you think there's another vulnerability, which is not a challenge, so there's no green box popping up if you do something bad and it actually works, please let me know, okay? Because then I can either try to make this a hacking challenge or I can at least try to fix it. Um, yeah, so one one example, uh, oh, this is coming in a bit, so. Some challenges might be disabled for you. So in the version that I'm running now locally, every challenge is available. If you are running the juice shop in a Docker container or on a Heroku um, machine, all the XXE challenges are disabled. So the XML injection stuff. Because I did not find a way to implement this safe without, uh, well, let's say it being trivial to just kill the entire container or the entire uh, cloud instance. Okay, so this XML in injection stuff is so dangerous that it's not, for me, it was not possible to sandbox it so properly that it doesn't actually leak into your uh, Docker management or into the cloud instance of Heroku. So that's why they are disabled there for security reasons, basically. If you would like to contribute to the project, which is of course always welcome, you can do so by just checking what is in our GitHub uh, repository, uh, the issues there. I'm not tracking only bugs in GitHub, um, I'm also tracking all the feature requests and, and ideas for new challenges and all that stuff. Or you can try uh, yourself, with, uh, you can try to, to be a translator and just visit our crowd in page where you can translate into the various languages. And there are some labels for the GitHub issues which are really good for beginners. So there's a good first issue and a help wanted flag or label. And if, a, if a, an issue is labeled with ready, then it means that it's basically um, pre prepared and described enough to just be implemented. If you choose to contribute in one way or the other, the good thing is you get stuff. Um, the bad thing is you get stuff anyway because I brought stickers with me and just put them on the table so you can just grab them without contributing, but that doesn't have to stop you from contributing afterwards. Um, but even if you don't, that's that's okay. But what I, what I regularly do for everyone who's submitting his or her first pull request to the juice shop, I'm sending a package with some stickers and, and other nice items. For example, there's a temporary tattoos with the juice shop logo available as well, for example, that, which are very popular, I hope. Um, so this, I, I basically pack a little juice shop care package and send it around the world. And I think I sent around over 30 already in the, over the past years. So this is the last pyramid I'm showing, the juice shop success pyramid. Um, at the top, of course, the contributors, so the number of total contributors is 38. Of course, this also counts like one line uh, typo in readme fixed commits, right? So the, the let's say the, the core contributors, the core team is at the moment uh, three people. Um, and yeah, so the others are just occasional contributors, let's say. Um, yeah, OWASP is separating its projects into three layers, so it, or three tiers. It's uh, incubator projects, lab, and flagship. And OWASP uh, Juice Shop was promoted a couple of months ago into flagship status, which is quite nice. It's probably the flagship with the most vulnerabilities in it. Um, the Juice Shop also made it to uh, at least to level silver of the core infrastructure initiative um, best practices. So this, if you don't know that CII, that's an initiative of the Linux Foundation, which they use to support and to um, basically uh, um, honor 
projects which are critical to the functioning of the internet. Okay, and you can see the juice shop is critical to the functioning of the internet, which is kind of weird, but nice. Okay, maintainability index, test coverage, that's all quite cool. Um, we have at the moment in total over all previous versions, 8,000 downloads of prepackaged um, versions in from GitHub, 2,000 from SourceForge. I don't know why someone would go to SourceForge to get it, but well, some people do. And there are, and this is no mistake, two million downloads of the Docker image. And I have no idea what crazy person must have set up some botnet or something to actually do this because this does not make any sense, right? I, I don't think there's even two million security professionals on the planet that would actually, that, that it doesn't make any sense, but it, it keeps growing and growing. So well, I, I won't complain, it makes for good advertisement. So for the future, um, there's some stuff coming uh, pretty soon. I hope to release the 8.0 version um, with complete new Angular 6 front end and 10 more challenges, almost 10 more challenges, um, probably in November. And for next year, I plan to have someone who's actually good with web design take a look at the front end and make it a little bit more pretty and nice to use because at the moment, I mean, it looks like it, it looks and it feels like an application that was written by a developer, but not a UI expert, right? And that's exactly what it is. And uh, one other idea that I had some time ago, but I never found the time to start, which is, might also be quite fun, but I'm still looking for someone to actually help with that, is a hacking instructor. So basically my idea is to have some button next to the challenges, and if you click that button, some little helpful wasp shows up and gives you some, some hints in the right place. So it basically shows you around and gives some, some hints how you can actually um, solve each of the challenges. But this is just a rough idea, so there's no, nothing implemented yet. But that would actually be quite nice. Okay, when will all this be done? Well, like it should be when it's done, obviously. So let me just try to show you how the new um, UI will look like. So, so you can already see this if you if you clone the repository and you switch to the develop branch and fire that up, then you will get the new user interface already. So let's see if that works. Start it. So basically this is the new user interface with complete Angular 6 support um, with material design instead of bootstrap. So it's, it's not, I mean, it's, it's a quite subtle difference, I would say, but um, it's, it was quite a, an interesting challenge, let's say, to migrate from Angular 1 to Angular 6 and also from bootstrap to material design. So, and all the challenges, of course, still work, right? I had to throw out one challenge which was not, um, which could not be saved because the whole um, customization feature works a little bit different here. Um, so that one challenge actually had to, had to be deleted, but everything else made it through the migration. So, and the scoreboard even got some new nice features. So for example, you can now hide challenges you already solved, or you can filter by, um, by category. If you just want to focus on XSS, for example, you can basically tick all those off and you just see the cross-site scripting stuff. Come on, so here we go, right? So this is this was a request by someone who actually solved a lot of stuff and was getting confused by all those um, then useful useless information of solved uh, challenges. There's one nice change. Um, 
the attack um, payloads with script tags don't work anymore because Angular 6 is really, really persistent in, or well, it's really insisting in stopping cross-site scripting with those cheap script tags, right? So if you try to put a script tag into an Angular front end, um, even if you allow HTML to be part of what, what the user sends, it will still eliminate script tags. So there's no, I, I didn't find a, found a way around it. So all the XSS payloads are now based on iframes, which Angular 6 still supports. So let's just see how that looks, because it's essentially the same. Place like before, I get the pop-up. If I would do the same with this uh, script tag from the previous version, it wouldn't work. So the Angular guys are really trying to make this framework a bit more secure than the previous one was, but it's still not perfect, let's say. Okay, so that's almost all I have to show. Um, there's some other stuff that I put online. So first of all, there's the links to the, um, to the repositories. Juice Shop and the CTF extension are both MIT licensed, so it's completely free to use for whatever purposes you want. You can even build some commercial application around it and sell it if you want. You can take it as a template for your web shop if you want. Uh, don't tell anybody that you did that then afterwards. Um, the ebook is also open source in a Creative Commons license which is, does not allow commercial reuse because that was just too much work. Um, I also have some training slides and even a complete IT security lecture online, which is both also um, Creative Commons licensed, so it's free to be reused. This lecture, which I'm still working on, um, is actually even an open educational resource, so it's meant to be just publicly used and uh, improved. So. Okay, so that's all the slides I have. Um, if you want, we could now try to do one of the more interesting challenges than just some boring cross-head scripting, right? So let's see. Uh, where is it? Here it is. So. <laughs> so just yeah okay just just to show that not all the challenges are really technical let's try this one so reset jim's password okay so what do we need to be able to reset jim's password so let's let's see what um forgot your password actually needs. It needs the email address. Okay. Um, I don't actually, I mean, I have my email address, I think, uh, if I remember it correctly. And I don't, uh, because I was deleted. So maybe I just need to register again. Well, no, I mean, th there should be some way to actually get all the users, right? In a really good, vulnerable application, there should be a really convenient way to get all the users. Actually, there's multiple ways to get all the users. So first of all, um, I mean, I could, I could now try to do some fancy SQL injection stuff, but maybe let's just try some easier, more simple way first. So. One thing I, in general, recommend really strongly if you work with the juice shop, and if you don't do this, then you are lost. Um, you need to have your development tools in the browser open because you need to see what's going on, especially here in the network. Okay? So let's just reload the page and see what kinds of fancy things are happening here. So there's all kinds of requests going on. Let's clear that up and just get to the start page here. So here the images are loaded. There's some search happening. Okay. Let's go to the about us page. And this request is interesting because it goes to a endpoint slash API slash feedbacks. 
And what does it give us back? It gives us back beautiful JSON with some feedback. Okay, so it seems there is an endpoint for feedback. So slash API slash feedbacks. Okay, that's that's nice. So what if we just try to ask the API endpoint? Ah, okay, that doesn't tell us anything. That doesn't work. But well, if there's a feedback, feedbacks endpoint, well, maybe there's also a user's endpoint. Ah, too bad. I'm not allowed to, to execute that. Well, what do I do now? Hmm. Okay. So let's let's see. Maybe we, maybe we can still get this. Um, so it would be nice if I would be able to log in as someone who is allowed to see all the users, right? So let's try the cheapest SQL injection attack on a login that's possible. Okay, so if this works, then this should actually kill the password check. Let's try. Hey, it worked. Oh, and it seems I'm logged in as the administrator. Well, maybe he's maybe he's the first one who's who has been put into the database. So let's see. Um, Here's the administrator's email address. Okay. Well, now now I'm logged in. Okay, that's that's pretty that's pretty amazing. Now I would actually like to try and get all the users from the API or through some other way um, with the help of my my new admin um, permissions. Well, okay. So the thing is, if you look at the application, now oh, if you look at the right. Doo -doo 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 at the requests that are being sent here, now that I'm logged in. They are sending an authorization token. Okay? So if I could send this authorization token along with my request to the user's endpoint on the API, maybe it would show me the results. So the first tip I gave you was use the dev tools. The second tip I'm giving you is use Firefox once in a while because Firefox has an awesome benefit over Chrome. Localhost 3000. So, the thing I can do with, um, with Firefox is, let's see, there's a network, yes. Log in. So I can open a request here and there's this, it's in German, it's bearbeiten und erneut senden. So it's edit and resend. So I can basically edit requests inside the browser's dev tools and just change parameters, which is quite nice. And it keeps all the headers and everything. So if I do the same thing I just showed in Chrome in Firefox, so I log in as the administrator, and this worked perfectly well, so I'll just do it again. And uh, no, I really don't want to save that. So now any future request has this authorization token as well, right, in the, in the headers. So let's see if I can do something like um, editing some request, which is a get, and make it to API slash users send, and the response, here you go. Okay, so basically Firefox is the cheapest and easiest um, API client that you can use. You can also use other things like Postman or you can use Burp Suite or Zap, 
But this is, even for non-hackers, this is pretty intuitive to use. So now I see all the different emails here. And I see some password stuff, which I probably shouldn't be able to see. But never mind. But here's Jim's email address. And this was the original challenge we wanted to solve, right? So we want to reset Jim's password. So let's try to do that. So reset password. Jim's email address goes in. And now it's asking for his secret question. Your eldest sibling's middle name. Well, how the hell should we know? Hmm. Well, maybe there's some information about Jim that you can find in the application. So if we would, and I'm, I mean, this is something you normally would explore for quite a while, right? So I just want to show how this all builds on top of each other. So if I would go through all these challenges, uh, all these uh, products here, there are some which, uh, which have um, some, some reviews. And let's see if I find the right one. So this is not it. Uh, this is something that's interesting, but for another user. Uh, let me see. I think it's... Where is the patch? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Here, the Velcro patch which is also an official merchandise product, which is also available on this table after the show, okay? So, um, the Velcro patch has two reviews, and one is from Jim. And it says, looks so much better on my uniform than the boring Starfleet symbol. Hmm, who could Jim actually be? Well, so if we ask Google, and I told you Google is allowed to be used, so Jim Starfleet, even if you had no idea, you get at least some links which are pretty convincingly uh, suspicious now. So let's just have a look at Jim's, and this is the real Jim, actually. This is not, it, it's not this strange, fancy guy from the new movies. This is, this is Jim, Jim Kirk. So let's see uh, if we go through all this. Uh, here's a family section. And it seems our friend Jim or James T. Kirk has a brother, George Samuel Kirk. So if Jim was as honest as I was with my uh, cat's name, then maybe I can do this. Jim at juice-shop, Samuel, and now one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay? So this is basically, uh, I, I won't, I won't uh, um, spoiler anything more, but this is basically the level that you, that you get, right? And this is, this is, let's say the, uh, this uses the easy and medium challenges. There's similar exercises which build um, on each other, which are much, much harder than this. Okay, so actually the juice shop should contain something for everyone, for every skill level. But don't be frustrated if you really get stuck on the five and six stars. Okay, so um, I don't know if, if, uh, if you want, we can do some uh, Q&A now. And in the meantime, I could try, I cannot promise that it will work 100 plus i can try to actually run the um, test suite in the background so basically the juice shop will solve itself while you can ask questions okay so let's see if it actually works npm run so okay so this will now in a minute just show a, a browser and will go to hack all the challenges in the juice shop. If you have a really, if you if your eyes are really quick, then you can basically memorize all the solutions. But probably you will miss some. Okay, working. So, any You're questions? Working. Oh, since I have the microphone, what's your cat's name? My cat's name is uh, Zaya. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and actually, um, our cat is uh, has been imported basically from uh, Kyrgyzstan 
um, and she only has three legs. So it, it's kind of a, it's, it's a very cute animal actually. Hello. Hello. Uh, you said that there is maybe no two million security specialists, but um, what about developers? Yes, developers are also supposed to use this as well. And I, but I still hope that no developer is spinning up um, thousands of juice shop instances for no reason um, every day, because only then I can explain this two million. But um, yeah, the, the, this application is not, I, I did not write this for security specialists actually. I actually wrote this f to use it in m my own security trainings I'm doing at, uh, at Kühne Nagel. That was the main purpose. And then it basically extended. So security testers like to use it for uh, training or for, for playing around. And um, also some vendors of security products, uh, I heard, are using it to try and tune their, their software to be better with, um, with JavaScript-based applications. Thank you. But um, um, do you think that um, there is also next part is missing, like how to fix things? That I, I always get that question. Okay, so the, the thing is, um, I would really love to have something like a button for each challenge where you can just click and now fix, and then it basically lets you, lets you try to find out how you fix it, and it verifies that the fix worked. But that's a completely different approach, right? So if that would be another, um, um, let's say, related project, that would be fine. But it, I cannot put this into the juice shop itself because, so, um, I mean, most of the challenges are genuine vulnerabilities, but some of them are actually crafted a little bit. So asking someone to fix them is not, not really feasible. But this is, the, you're right, this is something that is missing in general a good platform where developers are actually taught in a practical way uh, how to fix security issues. There have been some attempts, but I think there's nothing really mature yet. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Hello, is there a, here. Ah. Uh, is there a way to enable and disable certain challenges? challenges? No, not yet, not yet. Okay. So, um, Basically, I, I think with, with being able to hide the challenges, that for most use cases, that's fine. I, I also, I, I think I got the request once um, from some university professor he, because he would like to just show some of the challenges to the students and then next lecture some more and so on and so on. I mean, I'm, I'm using this application for four years now in, in developer trainings, and I basically just go um, through different topics based on OWASP top 10. So the, the exercises at the end of each lecture are, um, okay, now do all the XSS challenges. I mean, if someone is done with that and wants to try some other challenges on their own, they, I, I don't blame them. If they have fun with it, then let them, let them do it. So I don't, I, don't, I don't really want to restrict it um, there's platforms more for f b lecture based platforms like webgoat for example where you can exactly do do something like that yeah. okay thank you You're welcome so how far did we get so far oh, it's it's making good progress here yeah. uh, sorry may I also have a question uh, uh, have you competitors, meaning that uh, are there some other open open source projects uh, and, and targeting a little bit different uh, applications? Um, basically, the, I mean, I wouldn't call them competitors because you, I think you can never have enough exercise at, um, available, right? So that there are some older vulnerable web apps and one in particular is the let's say spiritual predecessor of the juice shop, which is the budget store. That's why I also added a budget theme for the, for the shop, which is a JSP application with, I think like 10 challenges maybe, but it's that, that's basically where I got the idea from. There are some, um, I think Hackerzone is some, some newer one, which is also quite popular. And then for example, there is a new, uh, a newer OWASP project called, um, OWASP dev slop, which is more focusing on, on the DevOps part of security. So what you can do wrong there. And so it, it's mostly consists of 
um, I think microservices and and all the infrastructure around it, and have it has security issues built in there, and it's meant to to train to train that. So it's more focused on operations people maybe as well. But there's there's tons of um, options actually. Um, while you were asking, there's a, a vulnerable application directory. So that's this one. There's a vulnerable web application directory project, which lists all kinds of online and offline available applications. It even has some a list of some uh, virtual machines, which you can download completely to, to play with. So as you can see, there's lots of um, exercise available. But if you check um, the list of technologies, it's mostly let's say older older stuff okay so there's not so much happening in the in the in the javascript world yet but there's definitely a lot of good things here the hackathon is quite good um, then there's oh, what was the name uh, do, 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 do. all the here the the, uh, the web goat for example is also quite popular and yeah the thing is many Many of these applications um, are written, or some have been written by tool vendors, which, and they use them basically to show how fancy their tool is, right? So it has exactly the right vulnerabilities that the tool can produce a perfect report of everything that's available in the tool. So well, th they are fun for, for a moment, but it's not enough actually to, to uh, complement a full um, university lecture, for example. Other questions? And actually the test suite passed, so we have 100% coverage now on the, on the scoreboard. Well, I have a question then. Uh, how the updates are uh, implemented? Meaning that you said that the new version is probably coming, and I have my older version and I have like 60% of challenges solved. If I update the version, will my progress be saved or do I have to start from scratch? It, it will, it, it, it would be saved if, um, if I, yeah, it will be saved if I, if I add new challenges at the bottom of the table basically, right? So if I, if I would squeeze in a challenge somewhere in between, then it would probably shift your solutions by by one. Uh, I didn't um, get the point. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I mean, the the challenges are just uh, entries in the table, right? So they're just listed in the table. Yeah. So and I mean that I have some challenges already solved, yeah, and, and I, I want to keep my progress. And then you like release the new version. Yeah. And so can I do? Do I have to start from scratch again? It's probably best to start from scratch then. Yes. Uh -huh. Um, at least for major release, where there's lots of new challenges. And but the, the thing is, the, the the challenges are stored in the in a cookie, and basically the IDs from the database are somehow encrypted and put into the cookie. Mm -hmm. So if something happens to a, to a previously solved challenge and it moves to a different ID, when the database is created the next time after you upgrade, then you have solved different challenges that you never actually solved, right? Mm -hmm. So I would I would recommend after a major update to just delete the continue code cookie and then just start from scratch or finish quickly and then migrate to the new version <laughs> can the flags be regenerated for ctfs you said there is a ctf mode uh, and there are flags are they static or can they be regenerated um they are st i mean they are static um in the running instance as long as you use the same secret key so okay, if, if you understood. want to, do, for example, if you want to do two competitive CTF, uh, two CTFs with, uh, with two student groups, for example, and they shouldn't interfere with each other, then I would recommend to use two different secrets. And then the scoreboard challenge for both groups would be completely different, different code, yes. But again, it's not meant for real competitive use. Is it based on some ready-made CMS or completely from scratch written? It's completely from scratch. So the old version was based on some 
some small proof of concept um, application with Angular 1, and the new version is based completely on Angular CLI generated template code. How many people work on this project? Um, essentially, there's three core contributors, but I'm both. I'm. 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 Let's say 95% of commits. That's me. Okay. No further questions. Good. Then thank you very much. I will put up some more stickers here for you. So when you leave just grab some and there's a limited amount of these nice uh, velcro patches that jim found so useful so thank you our guest and and uh, i have uh, also some present uh, from uh, it college side and also it foundation for education also has. okay something <laughs> thank you very much i don't know exactly what's inside but uh, yeah, it looks interesting it's socks. Socks. Socks are always useful. Thank you very much.